Good morning, and welcome back to my kitchen. Beautiful Saturday day today, good day for college football, looking forward to watching the Tennessee Volunteers. I'm going to show you this morning how to make a cast iron skillet cinnamon roll. For this, you will need a 10 to 12 inch cast iron skillet. Recommending an old style cast iron that's well seasoned, you'll get a better crispy crust on the outside of the rolls. You can use a porcelain coated, enamel coated type, but it won't be as crispy. Turns out the same, but just not as crispy on the outside. I'll go by step-by-step -step instructions how to assemble, baking, stuff like this. Overall, with cooling, preparation, baking, take about 45 minutes, give or take 10 minutes or so. Overall cooking time, 30-35. So what I'll do is go step-by-step. -step. I will post the, the um, ingredients and the direction in the description. Please leave a comment afterwards. If you do change anything, you can change the, ins the toppings for inside. I'd like to hear some feedback on this. Thank you. Your first step is going to be, you have to set this aside. You don't need your cast iron skillet yet. So this will be set back here over by your stove, out of the way. Now, in the recipe it calls for one and a half to a cup of flour. You sprinkle it down on your table, do your different things like that. I am using Silpat silicone matting. As you can see, I laid two of them down and overlapped it. This is for the rolls. It also helps, kind of like a sushi roll, it helps rolling it once it's done to get a nice tight roll. So you're going to take your, you can buy them in the store as a four pack of prepared buttermilk biscuits. You take these, you're going to open these up and you're going to lay them out on your Silpat. Just to show you with the first one, then I'll skip forward closer to the end. You take these, you're already preset. You take your biscuits, you're basically going to use the outline of the silk pad itself. You kind of overlap them. You can leave the gaps in between, doesn't matter, it helps. Now as you can see how I did this, they're kind of put together. You're going to be pushing them together totally. So this is how this works out. You're going to continue this with all four rolls and lay them out. So as you can see, I've actually laid these out. So I'm getting down here to the last of the four packs. And as you can see, it does fill out the silicone matting nicely. Okay, pat them down. If you use the frozen patties, let them sit like this for about 45 minutes to thaw. I take these right out of the, right out of the refrigerator, pop them. They're still nice and cold, but they're still um, able to go along pretty good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take these and you're going to kind of press them together to kind of fill in the center gaps between. So it's going to shorten them up a little. That's why I said don't worry about the gaps in there because it'll take care of it. Okay? Another good reason why they have the silicone matting, you don't have to keep adding flour to stop it from sticking to the countertop or your cutting board. So as you can see, this is going to be your layers, your flakiness, all part of your roll itself. If it starts sticking to your hands, add a little bit of flour to the top, you're good to go. So as you can see, rolls, all the little holes between, if you get some like larger, you can actually pinch it to overlap, which helps. 
and then we'll move on to your next step. Using an electric mixer, take a mixing bowl, half a cup of butter or one stick, four tablespoons of pure maple syrup. Best if you have availability to get it from a maple grove itself, best you'll have. If not, go to the store, get the 100% pure maple syrup, not the stuff that you would put on your pancakes. This is a little bit more bitter. You're going to add this to this. Then you're going to take an electric mixer and you're going to mix them together until creamy. take your maple syrup and butter mixture that we just mixed with the beater and you're going to take it and you're going to put it right on top of the biscuits that you just already laid out. This, you're then going to take this and you're going to smooth it out over the top of your biscuits. Don't worry about my children in the background. They're getting in, they're anticipating having cinnamon rolls because they know how much they like these. So I have to keep them at bay. I can't see it. Every now and then you might have to ask, you might hear me saying to them be quiet because I'm trying to do this, but it's okay. That's part of being a parent. then the peanut gallery kicks in. So as you can see, it's nice and smoothed out, quick and easy. Okay? You have your little extra if you need to, just smooth, just take it off and if you see any little spots, just drop it in, boom, you're done. That can go in the sink dishwasher later. Now, from here, you're gonna take a quarter cup of brown sugar, firmly packed. You're going to take this, you're going to sprinkle this over the top of your mixture. doesn't have to be totally even because it's going to melt down. in the sink for later. There's that. Now, next one, if you want to measure it out, you can. I usually judge it by eye. You want one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I usually use the sprinkle attachment I just give it a good shake across, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, depends on how you shake it. That's all you do, nice and easy. Quick, simple, out of the way. Now, your next step, we'll get in, I have to measure them out, is your either raisins, pecans, pistachios, walnuts, depending on what you want. We're, going to, we're actually going to do pecan chips for this next step. Now, from here, hands are washed nice and clean, so it helps gripping things a little easier. You're going to take your rolls, kind of push them in from the sides, kind of even them out. You're going to take your mat, kind of like a sushi mat. You're going to bring this up. This is the other reason why it's always good to have this stuff. Because the matting doesn't stick to the rolls. Okay, now as you can see I'm getting to the end. I have my next mat underneath. Just get your thumbs underneath of it. As you pull 
pull this one out, toss it right over in your sink. Down. Now, take your flour on a cutting board, kind of smooth out your flour on top of your cutting board so it doesn't make, because you can't cut on a silicone matting. That's the only downside to those. If they could make one, it would be cuttable. I'd have them in a heartbeat. Okay. Now I'll redo the cameras and get this ready, get this over here to the cutting board. Where you can see how this will turn out for cutting. Now, as you can see, I have the roll on the cutting board, flour lined down, little flour on the top. I pre sprayed my cast iron skillet, even though it is seasoned, you still need to use spray. Okay, you take your cinnamon rolls, big serrated knife. Here's a little trick that I learned. Take the knife, spray both sides with cooking spray. It helps it from sticking. Right in the center, pull through. Take this one, move it off to the side, you now have this. Okay? Second, pull through. I always throw a little extra flour down with this and found out also that you'll usually only get about two cuts per spray with your knife. Okay, you make your second, your next cut. In that one it was a half and this one it was a half. You then take these and you're going to line them inside your cast iron skillet. Okay, you want to do like, I'll show you as soon as I get this one starting to be cut. One cut, two cut, and I see what I mean by the spray already comes off. Three cuts. So you're actually getting eight rolls total for this. And I will show you from there. So from here, you can see you have eight cinnamon rolls in a pan, pre-seasoned. Pre you kind of just tap them down in. They will fill out and puff up, so you don't have to worry about that. You're taking these in a preheated oven, 375 degrees. You want your rack, middle set, take these, I always start, handle at the 9 o'clock position, 15-20 minutes. After 15-20 minutes, turn it to the other side to kind of help the convection of the cooking on both sides. So we'll set our timer. for 20 minutes and we'll come back from there. Once we start our, once it's just about done, we will then go through and show you how to make your topping. Okay, the first 20 minutes are down, so now we're going to turn the tray. As you can see how nicely it's starting to turn out. So we're going to turn it 180 and put the handle at the 3 o'clock position. 
and put it back in for like another 15 or 20 minutes. And we'll start the timer. And by then, when we got about five minutes or so to go, I will show you how to make the icing and everything else for the top of it. Now we're going to start putting together the icing for the rolls. The rolls got about a little bit over a minute left to go in the oven. So we will get those out here shortly. I got the trivet to set that aside. But while we're doing that, we will in turn get ready to put this together. Okay, so what you need, Laura, can you get me the milk out of the fridge? Yes, Dad. I need a half a cup of powdered sugar in a bowl. So you got a half a cup. Drop that in. Laura, can you put that in the sink? Thank you. Okay, we then need two tablespoons of milk one two tablespoons of vitamin D milk you can use two percent or one percent or skim it doesn't matter I like to use the vitamin D because it's a little bit more of a whole milk and then you need one teaspoon each of both maple extract and vanilla extract before I get these in, I gotta take this out of the oven. And then here's what they look like before the icings. As you can hear in the background, I have Andrew Bird going on the radio because it's just relaxing to listen to. So, one teaspoon of each vanilla. Smells good, doesn't it, Laura? Yes. Well, why do I smell pecans? Because it has pecans in it. So there's each of those. Okay, now with this, you really don't need to use a mixer. All you gotta do is the fork. Just bring it together. Doing this while this fresh out of the oven. Laura, can you look in the drawer for me? Just wait. Where's mom? She's not home from work yet. Can you find me the. It's either in there or it's over in here. I need the brush, please. It's probably in the drawer behind me. So as you can see, you got a nice, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, this one. Laura, leave it alone, please. Put it down. Okay, so then what you do is you take this. I like to use one of these brushes because it's nicer to get down into the crevices and all on the tops. The song, in case you are interested, is by Andrew Bird. It's from his Cemetery Gates, the live special. It is So Very On.
So as you can see, nothing really major with that. It's just a nice icing that with the heat of the rolls heats up nicely and it gets down all in through the inside. It's not overly powerful. If you want to double it, you can, but you don't have to because it, thin, it thins out from the heat. Okay, and then you let that cool. You can serve it in about 5-10 minutes. You can cut it and pull them out. Real easy. Laura, can you put the milk away, please?